So we're waiting. Ah. <laughs> uh. I think I need more time, man. Okay. But yeah. Uh, all we have to, is time. Yes. It's so strange. Like this, this whole thing. Like I've lost some people mm -hmm. that were, you know, close to me in this whole thing. And like I'm not afraid of death at all. Because I understand what death is and it's simply a rejoining with mm -hmm. source, with God. In yeah. That way. But it's very, very weird to the mourning process. Uh huh. Of, you know, you, you're mourning in your home, you're mourning in your room, you're mourning like that all of the traditional things that would be observed are not. Yeah. It just feels really freaking weird. Like just this whole thing. It's like acknowledging that someone is not with us anymore. Yeah. And doing so in a very solitary manner when you're used to that being a more, you know, where you come together, you know, with your yeah. family and with your friends and you, you help each other in that process. But to, to be forced to do it, like, alone, in a way, away from everybody, and away from your family, and away from civilization, really. I mean, yeah. you really want to break it down. It's weird. And I just, I find that, you know, that's why I say, you know, you ride the roller coaster of each day. You know, the emotions that may come, that don't come, you know, where you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling very blah right now or whatever. I think it is. for me, for me, it's like, as much as there's like the strangeness of the whole wave, mm. my wave is I'm a freaking controlled freak. Okay. Because <laughs> right now it's like, I call my mother all the time because my mom is in the healthcare business, right? Mm -hmm. My sister already got the whole corona thing, so and she was like, "Look, it is crazy." The one in New York, and I'm like, and I call my dad almost all the time, and I'm like, "Dude, you better not be outside. You better not go outside." Like, I don't know, I don't know, because mine has gone more into the control. I'm like, the best way you can do this is just like try and be in control, and that what comes out. Not the best, but that is yeah. how I do But then that's well, I think my coping is in the control. It's like, no, stay indoors. Where are you going? You're going to see a patient. Do you have a mask? Do you have this? And you have that. And my mom actually yeah. gets to see patients in a very unconventional ways, right? Because she's in the village and you know there things are like a bit more casual. And I'm like, no, please mask yeah. up. Please. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, so I'm not the best child right now but i think they're they're dealing with it they're like trying yeah yeah it's 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 yeah it's just weird like you you just wonder what's on the other side of this you know like once whatever happens and whether you know this creates a completely new awakening in people or whether this creates a whole nother level of fear and pandemic, like you just don't know because you just don't. So like, I'm trying to let go of control. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I'm doing my best to release, you know, that I have to know this and I have to know that. I mean, I'm here for working for an international organization that may or may not have funding going forward mm, and so, that was already a problem yeah so yeah. I, I i may be you know one of those people that just gets to pack up and you Girl, know there's no fanfare you. there's no 
you know, how you were there and then you weren't there, you know, type thing. I think those start that mean before they get to you. And I'm not even kidding. I I think they'll start with the sweepers before they get to you. <laughs> so don't worry. I'm hoping the law of positivity for you. Yeah, but no, I, that's the thing. I'm not even concerned about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it. I have no anxiety about it. It's the fact. It's like, oh, well, this could be a possibility just based on yeah. what we know and what his what we've experienced. But regardless, even if that's the case, okay. No problem. Yeah. All right, no problem. Because I I if I look back and I reflect on every other experience in my life, I have always been taken care of. Ooh. <laughs> I've always been I'm laughing my care lungs off because uh right now like the mantra on my phone because I do these things because I have to I'm the kind of person that I have to remind myself, right? My mantra right now is things always work out for me, things always work out for me. And I sometimes wake up and I'm bouncing like things always work out for <laughs> me. I don't believe it but things always work out for me. So yeah, but it's true you're always always taken care of, always yeah. taken care of. Like Yeah, even when you don't believe it, something just could come out of the blue and it would be like some random a random opportunity that like I was not even on my radar but mm -hmm. perfect and it's like oh thank you and I keep I step into that so I'm choosing to do nothing but walk in faith at the yeah. moment like I I I I am a worry hole right so and I claim it sometimes should not but I do I worry a lot right but Funny enough, even the things that worry me the most like for instance, I remember the last time we I really had like a big big worry was like my living situation, right? So and a lot of things had transpired and I was feeling like really really bad about every it was just a lot. And I used to worry so much that right now I feel bad for worrying that much knowing what I know right now. Yes. So I've I've allowed myself to find a balance between worrying about it because it's like second nature for me. Yeah. Uh, especially for me who has felt that I had to take care of myself like my whole life, something like that. Not because I have abandonment issues, but it's just been a whole, you know, like for me it has been a responsibility. I don't know about other people, but taking care of myself is a lot. Okay. So <laughs> So I plan to get a balance between trying to worry about it and just slowly transitioning to okay things always work out for me things are going to and then I stand in one place and I'm like oh it did work out I, <laughs> okay <laughs> and you can see that very much in my journal right because I'm like I don't know dear diary yes. I'm about myself right now because I don't know where I'm going to live in the next three months yeah. and then I'm like okay I've met I, I I literally even wrote the addresses of the houses I was visiting and the one I'm in right now I made like a tiny circle I'm like I hope you're the one because I'm done searching right and then now to be like oh I'm so grateful my house is pretty and the whole transition is like oh actually things do work out for me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, I think it gets easier once you have more evidence. Yeah. Like once once you're like, "Oh yeah. Oh yes, I came through that." Yep, got yeah. And once you like have that like game board almost on the wall, yeah. It becomes easier to act the face and to yeah. stand in faith and to not, you know, feel so you know in the wind with it is it weird that i whenever i'm in prayer i just ask god for evidence i'm like look dude i i need evidence that this is going to work out right because i i noticed i i'm working on it yes i'm just sitting still in faith you know those people like yeah i have faith no god 
let's do this how we deal <laughs> how we deal with each other give me a sign okay yeah, yeah. give me a sign that you're going to give me a sign which is going to be the sign once you give me the sign <laughs> i know <laughs> but i'm like please give me a sign right and i know sometimes i even attach like oh my god there was sun today okay that's a sign that's a sign my life is going to be okay yeah. like it, it has yeah. to be like sign related but again i do know and i do accept that that is linked to my control issues oh and you know it though that yeah. you're aware of it and awareness is the greatest gift that you can ever give to yourself and to other people yeah awareness even <laughs> my even if i meet my man i'll be like babe baby <laughs> darling city we yeah. got control issues aquap <laughs> karibu 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 we are dealing with control issues over here yeah. we are working on it we are aware but come in how are you doing <laughs> hey, it's even more trust it's just more trust <laughs> like it's and that's that's not the easiest thing to to get especially like if your trust has been broken in the past yeah. Do you think control is based on trust? Oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh don't say that cuz I have That's the, that's the I was like I have trust issues. Well, if you if you had trust, would you feel the need to control? No. Damn, baby, I have no trust issues. <laughs> I have control issues. And now I have trust issues. It's a problem. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. But we are spiritual. We are cute. We are nice. I come from a decent family. My friends love me. So yeah. <laughs> come. <laughs> oh. I need someone who can deal with this stupidity. I don't even know where it comes from on a good day. To be I really don't know. The thing is it's like to have good energy is like the greatest currency that you can have really i mean it could because with good energy you can attract so much to yourself and mm -hmm. you can build bridges where there aren't any roads you can create i mean it's it's that is your foundation so it's like do not scoff at your foundation because that is from which everything else gets built all the houses all of the, the the mansions everything every room that you will build in your life comes from that uh huh i'm checking out your oils ah oh, no the girl that's from egypt like when i was i in know egypt. and this one is queen of egypt is just Ooh. incredible Oh what God. is that for? Sorry, I digress. No, you're good. Um this one is just like when I feel like the need to luxuriate in my own self and mm -hmm. I just need like a scent boost to put me in that queen frame of mind that why are you worried about stuff? Why are you even concerning yourself with that? Why is that even do you not know who you are? Do you need a reminder? Put this on. It's like that. Yeah. Do you need to remember? <laughs> Do you need to remember? Yes, that you Let me see that. like my queen crown. For me it's music. Mm -hmm. Is that weird? No. How I put on my crown is through music. Yeah. And I do have like a couple of like uplifting stuff that just gets me on the Ooh! Jesus she a queen and um uh there's a song by Tyrus is it Tyrus 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 Riley mm. like she's <laughs> can't sing she's royal mm. so royal I like oh that song it's like reggae <laughs> time oh that that song gets me I'm like yeah I fix the crown real quick and I'm like yeah we good Yeah, we can we can do this. We can go through the world, yeah. But yeah, for me it's music. It's a combo. 
It's many things for me. What is it? It's music, it's movement, it's how I am adorned or uh -huh. not adorned. It's the smell, it's beauty. It's, you know, like, have I cleaned my house? And, you know, can I just walk through the house? Like, you know, this is my castle, you know? Yeah. It's beautiful, it's beauty everywhere because that is yeah. what I deserve to see. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a whole feeling. It's a whole vibe, the whole thing. It's how much of it are you willing to step into? Mm -hmm. You can step in a little, like put your toe in. It's like, oh, yeah. Really, I feel this kind of way for three minutes and 30 seconds, the life of this song. But then yeah. it's like, okay, how do I then extend that? Oh, yeah. Like, how I does it? On. It's like, it's yeah, how is it trying to how do yeah. I maintain it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I know, okay, so part of what we were speaking about was like the whole idea of love, right? Mm -hmm. And I realize that there are times when I'm like in, in the love vibration, right? And that depends on every other segment of things and how much I'm working on them or towards them like in terms of beauty i feel so much love for myself and others when i look good yeah. it's weird <laughs> i love it i i feel so much love for myself when i speak words of love and not just like i love you like you notice like i barely say i love you and this was a conscious decision not to just leave it as I love you because I, I find it, it is, it's a beautiful word, right? It's, it's a blanket. But what is underneath it? Mm. And I needed to activate what was under the idea of love and what it meant for me and what it meant for others. How I appreciate you. I love the way I appreciate you. I love the way um, you show me love, right? I love the way you look today. I love the way you make me feel when I walk in the yeah. room. Yeah. I like, I love the fact that I can walk outside this world and feel seen and be able to see other people, right? I love um, the fact that I have so much love in my life that sometimes I doubt if I deserve it, but it is there unconditionally. I love that I have people to love on, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that I have things that I actually love and I can show love and I can <laughs> express love. Oh, especially things, I love that. I love when I'm just there like, oh, let's clean this out. Like, oh, I love that. You, you, it, it is a whole thing for me. So I really needed to look into the little things Yes. that were based on love, I'd be like, yeah, I love you, but what do I love about you, yes. right? Yes. I love your hair, and I know I've said it so many times, and I'm about to hate <laughs> that I have it, but I love it. I love how your hair grows out of your head. I love <laughs> the of it. Oh, your hair. <laughs> Please. Please. It's too weird. Yeah, I love but Ah, oh, Jesus! And I cut it. That's the hair over here. I had to cut it. So. Diane, you are a whole crown, and you don't oh, even know. Gosh. Girl, it's like, and I didn't even meet this, what grew out of my head until I moved here. Yeah. Ain't that some stuff? Like, I didn't even know what my own texture of my hair was. Because the relaxing began so early in my life. Mm -hmm. Chemicalizing and all of that. So it was like, okay, all right. We're just going to dive right in. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to shave the head. And we're just going to see like, what's, what's on the other side of this journey. Your hair is beautiful. It's a sign of beauty. It's a sign of black beauty. Mm. It symbolizes freedom, it symbolizes choice, it symbolizes quintum, it mm. symbolizes how dope we are that like someone just decided to like curl our hair individually. 
Achei, achei, achei. And I agree because like when I was a baby, I don't remember and I tend to remember a lot of things when I was a kid, but my mom used to say I had beautiful beautiful hair. And I never got the hair. I never I never got my hair to that point where I felt the beauty of it. Yes. That was because I did not even have love for it. I had maintenance for it. Yes. A lot of things like you have we have things and we think like okay, yeah, but I love you or even people, right? So I have I love you. Oh, I, of course I love you. You're my friend. Uh, of course I have love for you like but it is just more of the maintenance of it. It yes. is just recently or when I started like the whole natural journey. Mm. Or, Johnny but like when i started to be true to what my hair was and i'm trying to learn a bit more of what it wants and needs like listening to its love language that i got to the point where i was like oh probably this is what my mother meant and i i, I don't think i'm there yet because sometimes i look at volume and like Ugh. why are you like between a 4c and a 4w and a whatever <laughs> <laughs> it's okay we love yeah. you we we're going to to give you as much as you need and that has been the same thing for like my skin my body my just loving on me like yeah. just loving that that because i i don't agree with that statement right now right i saw this statement that if you don't love yourself how the hell do you expect somebody to love you mm. i don't agree with it now but at that time it really resonated with the space and the time that i was in right because um one to clarify i don't agree with it because it, it sounds like you have to be deserving of love but love is air and air we don't deserve it we we it is our birthright right mm. so you don't have to be deserving of someone loving you or loving on you especially love right those things that are in its purest form beauty mm -hmm. the idea whatever it is you don't need to be deserving of them for you to have them you can have yeah. them regardless the fact that you're human you need to have love in your life right yeah. Yeah. um but back in the day i really needed, i was like okay so uh if that's the case like if this premise that i don't believe in right now of uh how you if you don't love yourself how the hell is someone going to love you then what are some of the things that i don't like love about myself and i made mm -hmm. like this and it is so horrible it was like full of body shaming like the things that i i okay so i made the list right i made the whole list of the things that i did not love about me or my character or anything and then i made a list about the things that i love which were like kidogo it was really mm. like you know? and then a few years no like two years down the line like i think last year i really had time in my hands and i sat down and i looked at that and i was like hold up wait a minute so out of this love and i don't really love what where are we at right so i checked and i was like okay i love this i love this i love And then I really broke down the list and I was like what is it that you did not love about yourself around that time that were, were not your purest thoughts mm. Mm. that were were based on things that people had told you they don't like about you yeah. and because of that or they did not appreciate that about you they did not see and because of that that became like your oh I don't like my I, I never used to like my eyes. What? Girl, I'm like when I was in school, people bullied me, not bullied, not not a lot because yeah, I was yeah. bullied, but people used to be like, "Yeah, you have big lips." And then I come here and people are like, "Mm, feeling." And now I'm like, "Mm, I love them." Like, yeah. Yeah. But it is those little things that I was like, "Okay, wait, wait a minute. This was never my content. This was boring." this was based on what people say they did not like about me but yeah. because of the place that i was in at that time i took it as okay i don't like my lips i don't like my legs i don't like this i don't like that yeah. i don't like um apart from the physical uh the emotional way that i used to express myself was more like 
passionate explosive i personally did not like the fact that i used to resort to like anger mm. to speak but then mm. i learned how to speak how how i wanted to deal with issues right how i authentically uh wanted to deal with anger or things yeah. that annoyed me yeah and around that time it was even the idea that the fact that i could speak on the things that made me angry that alone alone was like you're dramatic you're this you're that you're that so i really broke it down to realize okay so what is it that i say i don't love about me that was actually from other people yeah that came from society from yeah. family from friends from gossip you know bullies and all that and now i was sitting in a place where i was like i don't like that and no i don't believe this to be true i don't believe that you know like i have a temper no i don't believe that i'm an overthinker okay i do a bit uh, <laughs> and i think it serves a purpose i must i i, I need time to think mm -hmm. it's not overthinking per se but i take my time to think mm -hmm. and um so it is those things that i really thought for it's about being thoughtful yes not thoughtless yeah yeah like that's one of the things when um with my coaching clients like i have a small number of of clients that I coach and that's one of the first things. Thank you for giving me your services for free. <laughs> Always. I love you. <laughs> um, but they have to write a list. I ask them, can they write out a list of 100 things that they love about themselves? Mm -hmm. And normally the first thing that I get is just this like just dead stare. Like are you serious? Mm -hmm. Like okay, all right. And I'm good. Yeah, hesitantly accept, you know, the assignment. And then I'll check back in with them and I'll be like, "Um, well, I've been thinking about it." And what I realized is I don't love anything about myself. And then it's like, "Okay, great. Now that we have established that that's where you have been, now let's take a walk down, you know, this this separate street <laughs> that you may not have even traversed." yourself down ever before and it's like yeah. okay start out with something small like for me and i just will share my own experience when i needed to do that a similar exercise to that it was hmm well i really like my pinky finger yeah the end <laughs> like there was nothing else in that list it was just Yeah, I like my pinky finger. It's 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 dainty. It's it's nice. Yeah. And that was the extent of it. Yeah. Now, oh, I can write for days. Like all the things that I love about myself and that I'm so grateful that, you know, I have learned to love about myself. But yeah. it's a process. And it's like to to be able to just accept where you are knowing that like eventually there's a completely different destination that you'll end up at but yeah. you can just accept where you are without the judgment without the you know the the additional shame and the, all the additional guilt and the woulda coulda shoulda well I should be this and I should have been this and this is you know my fault because I shouldn't have you know taken that relationship with that dude and he really broke my self esteem and then like ever since that I haven't been the same person and the, and all of the stories like the story one story two story three like you can live your life through those stories yeah like, hand them out as you know here to get to know me if you would please read stories 1 through 8 thanks that's essentially like how we have been operating and how we've been shown to operate Yeah. instead of saying okay let me let me can i have that story back okay let me just look at this okay let me do some analysis what did i get out of this oh oh okay oh well yeah i i was a lot stronger after that okay so i got courage all right and what i got oh i got so oh, i got a lot of self awareness in that one oh yeah this is why i i also don't believe like i i say i don't have exes i don't have ex nothing like i have teachers 
Yes, absolutely. When I'm my ex, I'll be like, uh, ex what? Ex who? Because yes. that's giving you a, a position. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I respect my nursery teacher, but I don't go around calling them my ex, whatever, yes. right? Yes. So this exactly. is just people that you date as well. They're just teachers of life. I don't have an ex. If exactly. one of you, 10 of you, seven of you or zero of you is walking out there calling me your ex, bruh. <laughs> I am not your ex. <laughs> I'm not your ex nothing. I was your student, okay? I was interning. Yes. Hmm. That's it. Well, yes. Because and then once you once you can frame it in that way and you understand that everybody that you meet, even the people that piss you off in the grocery store, like mm -hmm. they are meant they were nothing is a mistake no like, you just accept that there are no mistakes yeah and this is all from my growth this is all from me from my learning this is all for me in some way shape or form and then you just relax into that fact and then you figure out why then is it here okay so thank you for showing up why did you trigger me the way you did or what is this about? You know, the, what are you trying to teach me? And like the ones that take us the longest to reconcile. So like, for example, my ex. Teacher. Oh, yes. My Chloe's uh, father. My yeah. Chloe's father. Like we went through it. Like it was, it was the, the doozy of doozies. To you know, was, the I had... relationship that we had that was ten years, and then you know when I wanted to move here, like we we didn't have a whole lot of of whatnot, and then kaboom, like the, the biggest fight of all fights began, and like this whole back and forth to court and custody and all this stuff, and like what he was saying and what he was doing, and it was just like. Oh, that I am in, I am at war. Like this is like it just doesn't feel like anything but like yeah strategizing for war. Like these meetings with the lawyer like feel like like wartime strategy sessions type stuff. But to look at us now and to look at like how how much peace and love and joy is in our relationship now. And yeah, like the amount of forgiveness that we have extended to each other, yeah. the amount of acceptance that you know what I was hurting in that time, and I didn't treat you the in the in the best way that I could have, and mm -hmm. I acknowledge that, and you know for that I am sorry, and you know for us to both be able to do that with each other now, and to show her that you know that this place is possible that peace is possible and that they whatever we need to work out with each other we did because he grew me up in, in ways that I probably would not have been able to grow in that manner to, be yeah. able to speak up for myself to speak up for what I felt was right to be able to to stand my ground, to, to not waver, because I was always the compromiser. And I would completely destroy every plan that I had if it meant someone else's comfort was saved. And it was the one time in my life where it was like, no, you will not do that. No, you will not. And you will stand your ground and you will fight this fight and you will stand in, 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 in what you know to be true period and whatever happens on the back end of it know that you are still operating with a level of integrity and honor and love for yourself if no yeah. one else for yourself for, for once yeah and, and that whole thing it allowed my daughter to see her father fight for her in a manner that he had not done so previously and yeah. i also saw a man fighting for his daughter to where my dad didn't fight for me in that way. So it yeah. was like so many, like once you could just relax and kind of settle and just accept all of the, the jewels, the emeralds, the rubies, the diamonds that came out of that situation. And to be able to, to, to not have 
that, you know, I won mentality and to understand that there are, there are clear, there's clear um, gifts through many avenues of this thing. It was, yeah, that was the pivotal for me as far as just understanding, oh, there's levels to this shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine because like around that time like even you look like you were going to war oh yeah you really look I like was back in some pictures and I'm just like who are you like my who? eye there was no light yeah. in my eyes yeah like, there was no like spark to me it was just very bland very yeah and that's why I I I love I love the fact that in God's magnific magnificent creation, he created healing. Because I feel like healing is like, have you ever like just looked behind a mirror to be like, what is behind here? You know, like you just want to know like what is behind. Yeah, that is healing because there was a time too when I was going through it with like one of my main teachers. <laughs> <laughs> life and love and romantic love um and i i i i did i was not dead and i i had accomplished so much in my life around that time but i was dead like even looking at the pictures i'm like i wish the world would know how sad i was <laughs> i wish the world would know how sad i was not like it's important or necessary or whatever but Damn, this was a hard time, right? So even looking at it right yeah. now, it's like I have learned so much. And for me to oh, yeah. even assign hatred or disgust for you or something like that, it's not even going to be fair because it's like saying all the people in your life that has taught you the big lessons and the small lessons don't even mean nothing, right? So, but I just remember like everything, even recently, like this week, funny enough, I went through some of the conversations that we used to have and whew, that was a hard lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. That was a hard lesson to learn. Just reconciling the fact that this was God as well telling me like, uh -uh, darling, this is not it. This yeah. is not it for you. And me accepting that this that was not it for me, but also feeling like a life is literally being taken away from me. Yeah. I felt I felt like there was like death between death, heartbreak, and that was a big lesson. And I'm like, I, I don't, I, I'm okay. I don't even need to learn this no more. But thank you, teacher. Never mm. say thank you anyway, but still, <laughs> yeah, see you. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I I was like, yeah, that's it. Once you go pick up the gifts, you lose the anger. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, once you realize like what was given to you out of whatever caustic relationship you came out of, like, mm -hmm. once you finally just accept, wait. Oh, that's where this came from. That's where I got my, you know, moxie from. That's where I got my strength from. Oh, that's where I got my car. Oh, that's where I got my audacity. Like, once you realize that, then you can't, it's like it takes all of the, the, the huff and puff out of the, the past, uh -huh. you know, whatever that was, because you realize, like, oh, well, shit, I wouldn't even be like balling like I am had it not been for him like completely yeah. like he allowed me to flex like in, in a way that nobody else was challenging me to flex yeah and I need to thank you for that appreciate it doesn't mean I need to be in your presence doesn't mean, mean that I need to 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 reactivate that relationship or anything. It's just yeah. you giving thanks to that relationship, to that person for their part in your growth. And that's it. Say that again, please. <laughs> giving thanks to that person, to him in that relationship for everything that grew you. 
in that relationship. Because it, it and that's the thing, like we have some throwaway relationships. Let's just yeah. Be the where like we don't learn shit. It wasn't. Like, <laughs> 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 like it wasn't. It wasn't even like. Uh, it was that Didn't learn it. Maybe ten <laughs> years from now. <laughs> But there are other like um, gifts that we're given as yeah. far as, you know, that we can acknowledge and we can, you know, be bold in that acknowledgement because, you know, it did give us that much. And that's, that's it. Like, you don't have to be ashamed in that. And sometimes like that's the harder pill to swallow because right. like, me when 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 my when I was going through my healing process and my therapist coach said that to me that basically you know because I was um, molested at a young age and I was raped at a young age and mm -hmm. it was to find what was the gift in that it was like say what now you want me what to what is the again I'm sorry time out huh can I have a refund like, <laughs> I'm feeling this. Yeah. Like what you like, mean? Okay, that, that, exactly. that for me in itself will make me angry. Yeah, well, and that's part of the, 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 the process. Because naturally, the way I grew up was never to go back and find the lessons. For who? No, you stay in how you hurt you were, right? Mm -hmm. And you're standing there with the entire audacity that you can and the energy and everything that it takes for you to stand in that herd and be like, this happened. Mm -hmm. I can tell you 10 different ways, 10 different voices, how this happened, but this happened. So for you to meet someone who'd be like, um, uh, you go find the gift, I will be very angry. I'll be like, no. Even right now, I just feel triggered. Like, I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's, yeah. that, but, and that was my... That was my healing journey was to to work through that and to then at the in the end be able to see what i was given in all of that what the gifts were did you figure it out yeah yeah i did what is it well when you're when you're sexually touched in that manner at a young age it makes you hypersensitive to energy it makes you hypersensitive to other people's energy um to what they like i could scan you down in a heartbeat and know if you were friend or foe if i needed to run or if i needed to stay and it was a very like instant thing for me um to be able to do that but that was a gift that was given in that regard now how can I use that now? How do I use it to my advantage? How do I see myself, the difference in myself and my ability to do that versus yeah. someone else that they don't pick up on shit. They don't feel energy. They don't know. They can't sense danger to save their lives. It's like, hello, why did you get in that car? Like, I don't yeah. understand. Did you not feel something? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay, well, I've had that for since... since I was six then. Yep. I can tell you exactly who who to be around and who not to be around. In all of that, it allowed me to understand like my introversion and like why I go in and when I go in and the 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 depth that I can go in and to understand myself and to understand other people and to understand the landscape of things. Like, I can break stuff down in a manner that is so clean and clear, and you've seen me do it. Um, yeah. To where, like, you'll say one thing, and it's like, oh, I can give you an entire analysis around it because I just know things in a different manner. Yeah. Like I can access my intuition in a completely different manner based on the fact that that was what I came from. And it yeah. was like to be able to reconcile that and like just, you know, growing up in a cult and growing up in, you know, the, 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 the ways that I w was raised to then be able to say, oh, no, but that gave me 
the gift of discernment, like in a way that yeah. you can't take from me. That gave yeah. me the gift of, of honor. Like I know what honor is. And yes. I know what dishonor is. And I can like distinguish it in such a manner that I am able to walk with integrity, with a calm, peaceful heart, because I know the difference. I know what it feels like to be violated. So will I violate? No. Can I now relate to women, to, to children, to others that have gone through something similar in a manner that I can see them? For them, not for yeah. what happened to them, but for who they are. And that's mainly one of the, the downsides to all this stuff is that people feel like, oh, well, you just see what happened to me. You don't see me anymore. And yeah. it's like to be able to, to, to assist in that way, it's completely different. But it's like you have to cry the tears and you have to, 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 to. like for me, it was get a baseball bat and beat the mess out of stuff. Like you have to work through the anger. You have to work through the emotions, all the stuff that came with it. You got to work through before, it to get to before the you key. get to the to yeah. the end of it. Yeah. yeah. But now I, I can like, relate I'm to grateful with my, that shit happened to me. I can Because relate. I know who it created. Mm -hmm. I know who it created. I know who I am. I know what I can give. I know how to serve. I know what I came here to do, what my mission is, what is my divine plan that I'm co-creating with God. Like, I know yeah. all of that without a doubt. And it's not me, like, prostrating myself in front of someone else to be like, please give me direction. Please, I need guidance. I don't need some external source as my, as my, key on the yeah. pathway i can open doors myself and i know this to be true yes like the, the strength that comes through the fire is beyond without a shadow of a doubt the greatest gift that you can give to yourself because then it is the gift of your own knowing it's the gift of your own trust experience then, oh, oh i can trust myself yeah i can trust myself and it's not a situation where oh no like all the behaviors that I used to get into, oh, you, you know, or, or people would do, you drink too much, you, you're promiscuous and you're having sex with everybody because you're just looking for love in the wrong ways. You, you, you know, experimenting with drugs, you spend too much money, you're gambling too much, you pick one, you know? That's, like, yeah. that's essentially what is happening with our family, our human family. That yeah. when you see them in these, you know, spirals of whatever, it's simply because they haven't, they haven't been given the encouragement to walk their road for themselves, with themselves, because they didn't trust themselves enough that they would actually yeah. make it to the other side, stay yeah. intact, or they didn't trust their community enough that they would be supported in whatever they were gonna like find on that road. But this you we have to walk our roads, man. Like and that's there's no there's no doubt about it. <laughs> I, I really sometimes just want to like one stop in Swahili we say dunia shuka like dunia dunia simama ni shuke it's like the world should just stop and then I'll get off like let me get off like mm -hmm. like it's a verse or something. But I can really relate, if, and, and that is tied to the idea of trust, right? Uh, and intuition, because what I get from you is that whatever happened to me has created this super intuitive person that trusts, that you trust on every, every vibration that comes your way, right? And I, could, I can relate to the violation in terms of my voice, I used to, I am very intuitive and I used my voice growing up to say, okay, I see this. And I've always been that person who, even my mother brought it to my attention the other day. I'm that person who sees things like four, three months before they, ma they manifest. I see, and I see it in, with the type of clarity that sometimes people don't understand, right? And the way I can say I was violated is that every time I could speak on something like that, it will come across as, shut up, what do you know? 
what life experience do you have mm. what what do you know about this situation or you you either have trust issues or you have this and you have this you know it was always labeled as something and that made me lose my voice as a kid mm. it made me just even lose my voice as an adult and right now i had to trust that okay what am i speaking on for me to in the in my healing process i had to learn like okay when i speak of this i speak from a point of trust i trust the vibration that i get i trust the intuition that i get i trust whatever i see and i trust i trust that in this moment you might not see it the way i see it and that does not mean that it's not what i see right because it is tied to the fact that i guess it's the gift i'm like this is a gift from god and if this is a gift from god i have to nurture it and i have to treat it with the audacity that it deserves but i can imagine the power that you have on the other end of turning a gift that is from an outright atrocity because that that's that that is a is a different level of power that i don't think i'm able or i can manifest yet that gift that comes from like pure fire like an atrocity an outrageous thing that happens to you that which is why i would my my greatest wish for my family of color my human <laughs> family of color that has suffered through so many atrocities that they go get their power and the amount of wealth that is in that power if they would just go get it yeah like yeah. that's the game changer right there completely because once you stop externalizing and you just focus inward stuff won't even bother you anymore that is like the, the, the way that you know you see people like flying off the handle and it's like oh nobody cares about us and you know black lives matter and they have all the stuff and the 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 protests and the the the, the feeling right that to the of, of wanting to be seen wanting to be valued wanting to be to be acknowledged as you know a fellow human on this path like all of that is an internal process. Yeah. And once you like know regardless of whatever how anybody else would would treat you or whatever they would say that you understand that that's their business. That's mm-hmm. for them to deal with. But I as for me and my household, we know who we are. And we know from where we come and we know of who we belong. And yeah. it's not for you to even know. Oh, that's nice that you feel like you have the power to 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 speak power over me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny, funny you should try. But you you don't even receive things in the same way that you used to. And that yeah. is why that is what I my greatest wish for all of us moving forward is to be able to walk in that type of self knowledge, self power, self actualized like strength. Yeah. My my if if this was a long term prayer, my short term prayer is to seek and question. If it doesn't feel like it is right for you, whatever. whatever information or whatever lifestyle that people have if it does not feel like it is um rightfully yours to claim whether it is the most logical thing ever question it seek what it means for you because i think the process to getting to that very powerful place is for you to be like hold up what is that Mm-hmm. they just smell something like that that's that's me and red bull that's me and something but you know yeah. like did yeah. i just smell something like yeah. what 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 is that you have to what get are, very inquisitive yes very. ask yourself and not to seek validation of others as well in the things that you hold to be true because mm-hmm. i think we have come to we are a generation that think that 
truth has to be collective. Mm. I don't believe yeah. that. We don't have we don't have to hold the same truth. Like you can have yours, I can stand in mine. It doesn't have to be collective. It can be similar same uh it can be fundamentally different. But when you question it with your heart to know if you hold that concept or that idea or um an occurrence in your life or a teaching from your family your friends or the society to be true and you hold it and you're like no i do not feel in my spirit mm-hmm. that this is for me or is even true or it holds value in any way whether it is true or not that alone i feel is like the short term steps to getting to that very powerful place right yeah. yes. so even when when even when we speak on this level and you get something you you normally say a few things and i take time to reflect i'm like yeah i know i was like on the yes yes or no 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 or okay i don't know what to feel about it because i need to be thoughtful about it let me look into it and see if it is true for me if it holds uh water for me as well as much yeah. as it holds yeah so a short term prayer for our family and our people of color is we have so much we have so much lessons in the world in terms of what it means to be black what it means to be a black queen what it means to be a black human being what it means to be a human being what it means to be in the civilized world what it means to be poor what it means to be rich but what do you hold for yourself to be true for who that is authentically you yes because sometimes i'm like okay i see this quote or i see this statement and i i seek within myself to find what does the spirit tell me oh no we reject that but it's okay you can hold that as yep. long as you want yep i am not accepting it yep or yeah like call that core belief work uh uh-huh. like what exactly are your core beliefs and where did they come from mhm uh-huh. and it's like how much of what you believe is actually just what you've been told and because we are very much a tribal humans are tribal regardless of where you come from and we don't want to be kicked out of the tribe yeah and so we conform simply for the safety of community but what we are understanding is that that is not safety because you are murdering yourself in the yeah. process and if you get to the end of your life and you're full of regret because of all the things that you didn't dare do say travel Question. venture whatever yeah. yeah because it wasn't what it was accepted then you get the these deathbed confessions you know of of people that are just like you know you should you know that's that one best selling book like that nurse and she wrote down the dying statements of you know the folks that um uh she was taking care of and they were all pretty much the same thing it's like don't think about what anybody else says formulate your own opinion live your own life you know t- t- figure out what you really want what you really believe and you know go forward in that and it's it's because of that i have to cut you short because it's like 12 seconds but i, I want to say i love you and i, I appreciate you. you and I this you. is love and light yes. to be yeah yes. yeah